the nationalist doctrine says is the world is divided into nations so no one nation there could be no one nation of the humanity so the world is divided into nations and for one nation to exist there are other nations and even the principle of self-determination has to do with the recognition there are other nations nations beyond ours Nations do not exist in a vacuum and they're not uh, self-contained, they're not... Uh, the feeling of national belonging, in my view, is a, is a relative feeling, it's a relational feeling, it's not an absolute feeling. So it has to do with somebody else and the significant other is that other, that other group or other nation that is very important for your in-group. The significant other is not necessarily a threat. Of course, it is often a threat, but it can also be an inspiring significant other. And again, if we look at the history, um, some na at the time, particularly of nation formation in the late 19th century and early 20th century, the nations that had acquired independence and had formed their own states were an inspiration uh, for, for those nations that were still fighting for, for creating their own national state. Um, on the other hand, for instance, significant others are often migrants. In some countries that have a past of race relations, significant others are people who are black. Uh, for countries that have suffered from colonialism, the significant other can be the mother, the mother country, so to speak, the mother country, the, the country that colonized them. So again there, I think it is important to understand that you have different significant others at any one given point in time, and also that these significant others can change. <laughs> By definition, migrants or ethnic uh, groups cannot be an inspiring significant other for nations because they are a lesser thing. A nation has to be a nation. You know, being a migrant within the nationalism point of view is a bad thing because ideally nationals are with, it, with their own nation is what this famous French sociologist Abdelmalek Sayyad said 30 years ago. He said the migrant is where he should not be and he is... Uh, absent from where he should be. So, uh, well, he, he was thinking of uh, Algerians in France. An Algerian in France should, be, should not be in France, should be in Algeria. He wasn't saying that this is the good thing. He's saying that's the trouble. That's why migration upsets the national order. Um, and if you think about it, it's so blatant, but it is true. It's also the whole question of citizenship. You, you as a migrant, you're not a citizen at destination. You cannot vote. Um, you are a citizen of your own country, but you cannot vote, you cannot participate in your own country because you're absent. Well, the refugee crisis has been important in, in bringing again migration to, to the foreground, but I don't think the refugees as such are the other um, in Europe today. It's still unfortunately the Muslims. Nobody speaks very overtly about race, N not even the worst politicians, the most racist politicians, but they, they speak very much about Muslims. I know most people will disagree with me, but I don't think Islam is the problem, not at all. And I think th the, the fact that they're Muslims is played up because Talking about the significant other, this is the only other that can now exist for the West. This is the other that exists. There used to be the Soviet Union, there used to be capitalism and communism. But communism is no longer a viable option. Um, the whole what was, uh, the, you know, the other then is, has been dismantled or has imploded. Of course, now we see a multipolar world coming up. But in terms of culture and in terms of political unity, Muslims provide for this significant other towards which the, the West can, can feel united. The refugee crisis is a catalyst or a symptom of something much deeper and much longer that is happening in Europe and the world. The migrant does not come into a box that is stable, defined, compact, and the migrant comes in and they have to adapt. That's actually assimilation, it's not integration. But also this box is not homogenous and it's not compact. It's very diverse, it's very dynamic, it's moving, and things are changing in themselves in any case, but also through migration. So 
the Greece where I grew up in the 70s and 80s is very different from the Greece of today, where a child might grow up. And this is the same for Italy, and I would think it's the same for Germany, and even for Britain. We cannot think that there is something called Italian society, or French society, or British society, where the migrant comes in and they have to unilaterally adapt. So integration is a two-way street. And I think de facto it is. The challenge is that societies have to rethink of themselves while they're changing, and maybe um, a little bit change their own self-definition. I think in some countries in, in Europe this has happened. I would say Britain, France, Germany has perhaps been one of the most recent cases. Spain, I think, has, has achieved to a large extent this. Um, other countries are having trouble thinking, okay, my country is no longer what it used to be. It has changed and we have to incorporate this into our self-definition. And we have to a bit question our, our, our position as a majority. Um, and we have to, to open up. Um, and, and that diversity is welcome. I think that is, and, and oftentimes politicians don't help this, don't, don't help this work.